Back in the day, a lot of spells and abilities players had were restricted or just worked in weird ways for RP reasons, or for lore reasons, like how you can't use polymorph on a machine because it's an ability that's supposed to transform a living creature into another one. This list will go over abilities that kind of work like that. Mages used to have to farm light feathers in order to use slow fall. Same with priests, as light feathers weren't just sold by vendors. You had to go out into the world and kill birds in hope of getting some to drop. Of course, you could also just buy some off the auction house. Other classes also had all kinds of reagents. Mages also needed reagents to make portals, druids for rebirth, shamans for reincarnation, water breathing and water walking, and hunters with probably the worst reagent system of needing ammo to use all of their basic abilities and auto attacks, instead of just being used for one-off abilities like all the other classes. None of this is in the game, with some being removed slowly over time in each expansion until finally, you don't need items to really use any player abilities in the game anymore. In addition to having to deal with ammo, hunters also had a whole pet mini-game they had to manage. Something Warlocks, the other pet class in early WoW, didn't have to deal with at all. Pets had happiness levels, and they did 25% more damage if happy, or 25% less damage if unhappy. Also, if your pet was unhappy for too long, it would run away. And pet happiness just went away naturally, even while not in combat, so you had to be careful about AFKing on a hunter for too long while your pet was out. Otherwise, you could lose it. When you first learned how to use your pet, you didn't actually get the ability to feed your pet at the same time. You had to complete a short quest after completing the hunter taming quest, and feeding your pet was the only way to give it happiness, until later on in WoW's life. So for vanilla WoW hunters, if you tamed a pet as soon as you were allowed to, there's a good chance it would run away before you also completed the turn-in for the ability to feed it as well. You also had to level up your pet since they didn't scale to your level until later on. And the only XP a pet gained was through killing mobs. So you had to grind mobs if you were leveling a low level pet for a while. Number 8. Racial Weapon Stat Boost Some races in lore favor some weapons over others, like dwarves and their guns, or trolls and their bows. These racial bonuses were good enough that you wanted to get a weapon to match the racial if you could since having a plus 5 skill and a weapon on top of maxing it out meant less misses overall. And for some reason, humans were the only race with 4 racial weapon bonuses, having a bonus for maces and swords, both one-handers and two-handers. Trolls kind of came in second since their bonus was for bows and thrown weapons, while orcs I guess are tied since they had a bonus to one and two-handed axes. Number 7, Ritual of Doom. This was an ability warlocks had until Cataclysm that allowed them to perform a little ritual with four other people, and once the ritual was complete, one of them would die at random, and a doom guard would appear and start attacking people. Then the warlock could use their enslaved demon ability to use the doom guard as their pet for a bit. And the only way to learn the ability was through a grimoire you had to find while killing demons. And later on, an alternative way to learn it was added through a small quest chain. Ritual of Doom covers all of the fantasy of being a warlock pretty well. Live sacrifices to summon a powerful demon that you would then manually have to take over to use as your pet. And even after this ability was removed, and warlocks were just given the ability to summon doom guards in other ways, the warlock pet version of the doom guard always appeared with the enslaved demon animation around it as kind of an homage to its origins. The removal of this ability is pretty obvious in its reasonings. It was kind of an impractical thing to do to get a temporary pet, and warlocks wanted to use doom guards, so it was just turned into a cooldown, later turned into an option for a permanent pet, and I think today it can only be summoned at random through doom procs or something. Also in Legion, Warlocks could do a version of this ritual to unlock a hidden artifact appearance. Just to point out that they paid homage to this recently, since I know I'll get a whole bunch of comments about it if I don't specifically mention this. Number 6. Detect Magic In Vanilla WoW, you couldn't actually see what buffs, mobs, or enemy players had. But mages had a skill called Detect Magic, which would show you this information. 
This is because in most fantasy games, including tabletop RPGs like Dungeons & Dragons, information on your enemies isn't something readily available. And it was just standard for you to not actually know much about your opponent on your first playthrough, and just learn things through experience. And in some RPG games, hiding and revealing buffs was a PvP metagame tactic. So obviously, WoW wouldn't show them by default. But as the game progressed, they figured out WoW wasn't really the kind of game where these mechanics really mattered that much. So they removed the detect magic ability and just started showing all buffs on enemies by default instead. Number 5. Entangling Roots Did you know Entangling Roots used to have an outside-only restriction? Like, for some things, only being usable outside makes sense. Like, how you can't ride mounts inside and stuff like that. And there's even a few abilities that still can't be used inside, like a druid's travel form, because it's basically like a mount, I guess. Entangling Roots was a root that did a little bit of damage, and would have made for some great CC in early WoW, as it's used today on melee mobs. But you never hear any vanilla stories about it being used, because most raids and dungeons took place indoors. Not all, of course. AQ40 was pretty famous for allowing mounts inside of it, but like almost every other one was indoors, rendering entangling roots useless. Now, as to why it had this restriction is pretty obvious from a fantasy point of view. The ability literally brings the roots of the earth out of the ground to grab the target, and obviously this can't be used inside buildings. But also obviously it shouldn't be usable in the desert either, or on hard bedrock, or anywhere where there isn't trees. So just giving it the mount restriction of only being usable outside, Seems like it might have just been easier to code. They did eventually remove its zone restrictions, and it's been a staple of Druid PvP and Melee Mob CC ever since. Number 4. Brewing Poisons As rogues leveled up, they would learn how to brew stronger and stronger poisons with their class-specific profession of poison making. Nowadays, the only class with a class-specific profession is Death Knights and they don't even level that up, it's just a way to enchant their weapons. With rogue poisons, you had to do a small quest chain to unlock them, then had to level it up like any other profession by crafting tons of lower level poisons. And you needed a recipe from a raid boss to craft the strongest rank of poisons. And mats for poisons were obtained from all kinds of things and not just vendors, like pickpocketing, lockboxes, and herbing. Rogues also had the lockpicking profession to level up, but that was more like a gathering profession. Eventually, it was removed and they just moved poisons to vendors to be bought, as it was kind of too much of a chore for one class to have to go through so much for a basic DPS feature of their class, even if it did fit their fantasy. And eventually, even the vendor poisons were removed, since no other class had to deal with any kind of special items needed to DPS, with the removal of ammo. And now, not even all three specs of rogues use poisons anymore. And they work more like buffs, as you don't actually have to put them on your weapons anymore either. Number 3. Priest Racials Out of all the classes, priests in particular had extra racials on top of their normal racials. What this meant is a night elf priest, for example, would have its normal racials of shadow mill, dodge, and nature resist, but also have two additional racials, like Star Shards and Elune's Grace, while an undead priest wouldn't have Star Shards or Elune's Grace, and instead have Devouring Plague and Touch of Weakness. All priest races had their own special two racial abilities, and some of these racials were really good, like how most Alliance players wanted Dwarf Priests for their Fear Ward racial. Having different abilities for classes based on race was a unique idea, and I think it would have been fun for more classes to have this feature. Although, these racials didn't last long, as in Wrath, all priest racials were removed, and Blizzard just kind of gave all priests some of the racials they liked the best as baseline or talented abilities, like Devouring Plague and Fear Ward. But just like most of the things on this list, this change was made because it was too much of a hassle to balance a class having two different abilities for each race. Number 2. Having to perform special actions in order to earn basic class abilities. 
In order to tame a pet, you had to first go out and tame three pets of varying difficulty, in order for your character to actually learn how to do it, which made getting the abilities feel better and fit the fantasy of the class better. In order for warlocks to summon their various demons, they had to go out and get special materials to summon it, and then beat it into submission before forming a pact with them. In order for warriors to get their various stances, they had to go out and learn the embodiment of those stances, and so on and so on. These special actions were called class quests, and nearly every class had some in one shape or form. Not all were equal though. Some actually made sense, like the ones I mentioned before with hunters and warlock pets, and some were just kind of ridiculous with their requirements, like a level 20 shaman having to run across two continents multiple times to collect water samples to learn how to use their water totems, or druids having to regularly swim into fatigue zones and run across high level zones to use their most useless form. Eventually, these were all removed, as they might have been fun the first time around, but were just plain annoying to do on alts for the most part. And now, you just get all of your abilities automatically as you level up. There's no need to even visit your class trainer anymore. And number one, basically vanilla paladins. Paladins were a mess of a class who were mainly brought to raids because their buffs were really good. But their buffs only lasted five minutes, and could only be applied to one person at a time in early vanilla. So some of them basically spent the whole raid just reapplying buffs and throwing out little bits of healing. But oh boy, the moment an undead boss came up, paladins finally got their time to shine. As paladins, a class with very few actual damaging abilities in vanilla WoW, did have one of their only damaging spells tied to one specific type of mob, and that of course was Exorcism. Exorcism was a single target, instant cast, long range nuke that did damage to only undead targets but it also had a 15 second cooldown, because you didn't want paladins to be too powerful against undeads, of course. Because in vanilla WoW, instant cast spells that did a lot of damage were pretty rare. So despite its heavy, inherent restriction to only being usable on one type of target, they still had to balance it accordingly, for some reason. Now in vanilla WoW, it was normal for lots of abilities to have specific target restrictions, but a vast majority of them were for CC abilities. Paladins were the only class with a whole host of abilities that seemingly only worked on undeads. They also had Holy Wrath, an AoE ability that hit for almost as much as exorcism to all undeads. And get this, also demons, within 20 yards. But with a 2 second cast time and a 1 minute cooldown, because they didn't want the ability to be too useful, you know? Pallies also had Turn Undead which was a fear CC that only worked on undead targets, and was a little more reasonable for the time period as, like I said, most classes had target restrictions on CC abilities. And finally, Pallies also had Sense Undead, a tracking spell that only worked for undead targets. And that's not all. In Beta WoW, Pallies had two more undead only abilities. Their Seal of Righteousness ability used to give an increase to their attack power against undead targets, and Judgment, a staple of Pally abilities ever since their inception, used to be an AoE nuke that only worked on undead targets. When Vanilla WoW finally launched, Pallies got a huge overhaul and a lot of their abilities were changed and removed, and in this purge, Seal of Righteousness was changed to do bonus damage on swings against any targets, and Judgment was changed to work on any target as well, and would activate the second ability whatever seal the Pally had active. With all these undead only abilities, you'd think the undead would have played such a large role in vanilla WoW, right? Well, actually, the only raid with a significant population of undead mobs and bosses was Naxxramas, which was also the last and least played raid of vanilla WoW. Eventually, as time went on, they gave Pallies ways to use their undead abilities on more targets and even had a proc that allowed exorcism to be usable on anything, before just removing its target restriction completely. But even today, there are still target restrictions on a lot of CC abilities, just not really on any, you know, single target nukes. Okay, and that's it for the video. Is there any other major RP-related thing I miss that would fit in this list? 
I'd love to hear about them for potential videos just like this one.